Hey guys, welcome back to Click Academics. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to solve this exponential equation. Now, make sure to stick at the end of the problem, where I have three bonus problems that are similar to this one, which you guys can try to solve. Alright, so I have x to the power of x to the power of 6 is equal to 144. So I want to find the value of x. So to start, I'm going to take the power of 6 on both sides. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is the same thing as a to the power of m times n. And m and n, these two are interchangeable, meaning this is the same thing as a to the power of n times m. So now, if a to the power of m times n is the same thing as a to the power of m to the power of n, then a to the power of n times m, this has to equal a to the power of n to the power of m. So in simpler terms, a to the power of m to the power of n is equal to a to the power of n to the power of m. So in this case, we have x to the power of x to the power of 6 to the power of 6. We can think of x to the power of 6 as m and 6 as n. So now we can switch these two places. So now we have x to the power of 6 to the power of x to the power of 6. Now this is equal to 144 to the power of 6. Now I'm going to let x to the power of 6 equal the variable y. So now I have y to the power of y is equal to 144 to the power of 6. Now 144, this is the same thing as 12 to the power of 2. So now I have 12 to the power of 2 to the power of 6. And remember, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So 2 times 6 is 12. So I have y to the power of y is equal to 12 to the power of 12. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of a is equal to b to the power of b, this means that a is equal to b. So in this case, y is equal to 12. However, remember, we're not solving for y, we're solving for x. And x to the power of 6 equals y. So now that we know that y is 12, this means that x to the power of 6 is equal to 12. So now, to solve this, I'm going to take the power of 1 over 6 on both sides. So now I have x to the power of 6 to the power of 1 over 6 is equal to 12 to the power of 1 over 6. Now 6 times 1 of 1 over 6, these two cancel out. So now I'm left with x is equal to 12 to the power of 1 over 6. So this is my answer. All right, so I have 2 to the power of 20 minus 1. Now 20 here, we can rewrite this as 10 times 2. So now I have 2 to the power of 10 times 2 minus 1. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m times n, this is the same thing as a to the power of m to the power of n. So 2 to the power of 10 times 2, that's going to equal 2 to the power of 10 to the power of 2. And I have this minus 1. So now 1 here, this is the same thing as 1 squared. And if I have something in the form a squared minus b squared, this is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So in this case, a is equal to 2 to the power of 10, and b is equal to 1. So I have 2 to the power of 10 plus 1 times 2 to the power of 10 minus 1. Now, 2 to the power of 10, this is equal to 1,024. So now I have 1,024 plus 1 times 1024 minus 1. 1024 plus 1, that's going to be equal to 1025. And 1024 minus 1, that's equal to 1023. So now I'm left with 1025 times 1023. So now, let's go ahead and evaluate this. Well, first off, 1,025, to make this simpler, we can rewrite this as 1,000 plus 25. 
and 1023, we can rewrite this as 1000 plus 23. So now we have 1000 plus 25 times 1000 plus 23. So to solve this, I'm going to start by distributing the 1000. So now I have 1000 squared plus 23 times 1000 plus 25 times 1000 plus 25 times 23. So now 1000 squared, that's going to equal 1 million plus 23 times 1000 is 23,000. 25 times 1000 is 25,000. And 25 times 23, that's going to be 575. So now if you add all of these together, you get 1,048,575. So this is my answer. All right, so I have x to the power of x to the power of 2 is equal to 16. So I want to find the value of x here. For my solution, first start with x to the power of x to the power of 2 is equal to 16. Now I'm going to take the power of 2 on both sides. So now I have x to the power of x to the power of 2 to the power of 2 is equal to 16 to the power of 2. Important property of exponents is that if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. And m and n, these two are interchangeable, meaning a to the power of m times n, this is the same thing as a to the power of n times m. So if a to the power of m times n is equal to a to the power of m to the power of n, then this means that a to the power of n times m, this is equal to a to the power of n to the power of n. So in simpler terms, a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m to the power of n. So right here, we have x to the power of x to the power of 2 to the power of 2 is equal to 16 to the power of 2. So we can think of x to the power of 2 as m, and 2 as n. So this is the same thing as a to the power of n to the power of m, meaning if we change these two places, this is going to equal x to the power of 2 to the power of x to the power of 2, which is equal to 16 to the power of 2. Now I'm going to let x to the power of 2 equal to the variable y. So now I have y to the power of y is equal to 16 to the power of 2. Now 16, this is the same thing as 4 to the power of 2. So now I have y to the power of y is equal to 4 to the power of 2 to the power of 2. Now if we go back, remember how if we have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So 4 to the power of 2 to, 4 to, the power of 2, to the power of 2, that's going to equal 4 to the power of 2 times 2. And 2 times 2, that's equal to 4. So I have y to the power of y is equal to 4 to the power of 4. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of a is equal to b to the power of b, then this means that a is equal to b. So in this case, y is equal to 4. However, remember, we're solving for the value of x. So if x squared is equal to y and y equals 4, this means that x squared is equal to 4. So now to solve this, I'm going to take the square root on both sides. These two cancel out. Now I'm left with x is equal to positive or negative 2. So this is my answer.